I V M. How to Citizen is an I V M production, and if you like this show, you should also check out the other I V M shows like. The seen and the unseen, one of my favorite podcasts, a show which is hosted by journalist Amit Verma, where he discusses economics, politics, current affairs, and its impact on our society. He's had guests like Steven Pinker, Shruti Raj Gopalan, Ram Chandra Guha, and Shashi Tharoor, amongst many more. New episodes every Monday on IVMPodcast dot com, IVM Podcast app, or wherever you get your podcasts. Hello and welcome to How to Citizen. I'm Meghnad, and we have today a very special guest with us: writer, producer, showrunner, a man who wears many hats, Joel Pereira. Today we are dealing with Chapter Eight: Confronting Marginalization. Like last time, where we understood marginalization, today we are trying to confront it in our own little ways. Joel talks about what all he has done to confront marginalization and he tells us a lot of stories about what happened when he was forcefully made to confront marginalization. We talk about our favorite subject on the planet, reservations. We talk about whether they are necessary and also we talk about the recent reservation policy and its flaws. Does it even have flaws? We will find out. So let's get schooling. Let's get schooled. This is chapter eight, episode eight, mm-hmm. and again, like last chapter, this is also intense. Fellow yep. Hindu Brahmin from Nagpur. Yup, yup, yup. We are the worst people to be talking about this. <laughs> yeah, but you know what to do. Yeah. When we were in eighth grade, we had to do this as well, but we have no idea what happened. That's then. true. And we have been having a bunch of conversations about this before the episode, and we got into like massive arguments and massive realizations and sadness. Yeah. So that is all going to come out in this podcast. Yeah, and yeah. for uh, to witness that, we have a very special guest today, Joel Pereira. Thank you. Hello, Thank hi you. Joel. Hi. Uh, to begin with, can can you just uh, introduce yourself quickly? I'm a TV producer. Journalist for a while, news geek, and also minority. <laughs> <laughs> yes, important detail. <laughs> Marginal. My though my community. I'm I'm a Catholic yeah. from uh, the west coast of India. I say that because my mother's from uh, Mangalore and my dad's right. from Goa. Right. And I think as part of the ca- Christian community, the Catholics tend to be a little more privileged right, than right. Uh, the people than like the Christians in North India, etc. Mm. But I still will represent to the best yeah. that I can. <laughs> <laughs> so Joel how was how was school like how were you in school So here's the thing I wasn't in India for a lot of school Right I was my dad used to work for uh, an American airline hmm. and then British Aerospace so we were first in the US and then in the Gulf Right and um, I came back to India in class 9 hmm. okay in the uh, I think I was I guess 14 or right. so and uh, everything was completely alien to me yeah, because yeah. it got completely different syllabus and uh, i moved back to where my mum grew up right. in this place outside of bombay called vasai right uh, vasai. okay yeah vasai and vasai where i lived was a uh, full of east indians mm. so that was a very insulated community themselves i went to a catholic school and had to learn oh actually were experienced marathi for the first time oh. and it was an ssc school so it was compulsory <laughs> so i literally started learning marathi in class 9 9 wow yeah and how did you do very badly <laughs> very badly i mean i wouldn't expect anything else otherwise if you did well you were a, you are a genius no i was <laughs> decent, a genius no, i was <laughs> decent otherwise but my marathi teacher was just like see if you get 32 na Out of hundred, then they'll give you five marks. <laughs> so aim, that's called grace. I don't know if it still happens. But yeah, yeah, it does. Yeah. Yeah. So if you, so the SSC system is rigged in such a way that you, they want to push everyone ahead, yeah. right? So it's like you get up over thirty or thirty-one marks now, and you'll get grace uh, marks. You'll get grace marks, and you'll pass. Yeah. Because her aspirations for <laughs> you obviously were very low. Very low. Yeah. But uh, so you had no exposure to the CBSC civics. Sort of curriculum then none none, none. but then uh, when you were in eighth grade where, where were you in Dubai no in Saudi Arabia in uh, in, oh, sorry, in Saudi Arabia I, I actually I did it was not CBSE it was ICSE ICSE ah, because okay. I went to the embassy school right oh right yeah, so yeah. It, it, 
was there a chapter on marginalization in that course do you I remember i do not remember you don't remember i don't remember but how was civics there in icsc like uh, like what what was your experience and what is your view on civics curriculum then okay i'll give you an exp- uh, when i was in 8th or 9th standard right. uh, 7th or 8th standard when right. i was still not back in india uh civics we were learning indian civics which was ah. completely uh, alien right? right because there was no we had no connect we had mm. no point of connect we were sitting in a foreign country in a gulf in a monarchy yeah. <laughs> talking about <laughs> panchayati raj <laughs> this and that and yeah there was nothing we were just words on a page which we all memorized and and probably like did yeah. well at or whatever yeah. but when i came back to india in class 9 and got into the ssc system that is i think where they actually introduce the subject of civics mm. at all ah. because normally there's a social studies or social sciences at least i remember when i was in school and it was history geography and then in 9th standard did they even introduce civics, civics which right. was the smallest component of that i mm. think it was like 20 marks or something yeah, yeah, like yeah. 100 and yeah that was when we just we first got introduced to the, to the civics, civics idea itself right. so i i think in the ssc board at least when i was there i was on even keel with everyone <laughs> yeah. else but how was how was that like the fact that you were learning civics in your first year in india having no context not enough context of the country as everyone else in the class did yeah. and reading these things about the country how, how how was that like do you remember how was that experience um it started making sense right because uh. i remember in 94 or 95 when i was in class 9 the the Vasai moved from becoming a panchayat hmm. to a municipality. Okay. Oh. Okay, there was a big vote and a big election etc because finally Vasai Virar that entire region hmm. had enough uh, population to become a municipality. And I remember during that time there were lots of conflicts with this organization called Sidco hmm. which is the uh, Maharashtra state uh, development organization right. right and Sidco wanted to come in and you know do a lot of things and there were a lot of farmer protests at that time you know there was these movements called Harit Vasai and right. you know things like that which were talking about uh, keeping the FSI low hmm. and they didn't want basically Vasai to become uh, what Kandivli or Borivli or all right. these places had become the right. urban jungles basically yeah. So at that time then with what I was learning in school and I was always interested hmm. in the subject so what I was learning in school started making sense then because uh, of what was happening around right. me right. Uh, that's very interesting right like because for instance and you know I think it's the opposite for us because we just talked about this right um so our chapter today is on uh, confronting marginalization right mm-hmm. so the last chapter which we did with uruj was on understanding marginalization but this is about confronting it about what policies and laws have been made by the government to deal with marginalization make sure that human rights are not violated and constitution is you know uh, the fundamental rights are basically uh, reflected so we were just talking about this both mm-hmm. of us from from, from nagpur right? right and there's this one event that happens every year mm-hmm. uh, which is called the dhamma chakra pravartan din okay right which is around dasara okay a uh, lot of uh, neo buddhists and dalits they come from all across india to mm-hmm. nagpur to mm-hmm. diksha bhumi mm-hmm. where in 1956 baba saheb ambedkar converted, had converted yeah. right yeah. and they come in lakhs and mm. lakhs and you know they, it's a it's a pilgrimage yeah. right pilgrimage site of sorts and i remember this because you know as a child you can see like this horde of people just coming in and staying there for 4 5 days and then going away and our parents did not take kindly to that mm. you know like the whole invasion they always portrayed it as an invasion mm. like and they would use the pavne wale in a very sarcastic mm. way which mm. is like mm. guests yes, are here, here yeah. yeah and it's not kindly it's just you know whatever but even at that point when say for instance you, things were happening around you and mm. you were able to contextualize it with your civics mm. for me uh, who was around this age mm. i could not connect that to this mm. right mm. and and i think it's the job of our parents as well mm. to sort of set that context right. to connect the two yeah. did that happen to you was your parent the one who actually guided you through this process so again i um, little unusual mm. i came back to india my parents didn't come back with me oh. so they were still in the gulf oh. i lived with my grandmother oh, all right. right and uh, my family is or was quite political mm. in the sense that you know my uncles were all very well read and all kind of left leaning <laughs> uh my grandparents their generation also like you know my aunts and uh, my grand aunts and mm. grand uncles have they've been active in politics in especially in bombay right 
so in our house these things were discussed right these these issues like you know about all these things were discussed oh which and i would read a lot right and the house was full of the right books right so, you know right. yeah yeah the house was full of the right books because again like i said all my uncles were also uh, readers and they yeah, read right. all these things uh, like an uncle of mine did his uh, did his law for instance so he had all those books happening mm. and like you know, another uncle was uh, i think a union leader in a bank at that time mm. and so he had all those books happening oh. so yeah so there was a lot of uh, influence right. from there you know that happened Very that's such a great education system having well read uncles <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> right books no because my parents uh, at that time had no idea again mm. because my folks have been out of india since i think 1978 Oh right so they had no clue hmm, right. right what was happening yeah. in india like the i'll tell you something the only political thing i remember from growing up was when rajiv gandhi was assassinated oh in 91 91 yeah and i remember we were in the gulf at that time right. and uh, we were watching cartoons or something so i was watching tv and the news broke and i called my mom and it's like something's happened in india hmm. and she was like weeping okay oh. she she was weeping yeah and that was the first brush i had with politics in india okay rajiv gandhi getting a chance i remember this i must have been 10 or something 10, yeah. yeah yeah i remember this from my youth but beyond that they also had no idea what yeah. was happening because I they were yeah. yeah and then of course there was no internet right. you couldn't get yeah yeah, yeah. indian yeah. news yeah. like yeah. you know but uh, uh, yeah so, so the, your your political awakening i must say has happened very quickly very fast in early ages because of for people around was, you for yeah. us it was this morning <laughs> <laughs> just this morning <laughs> so, but you guys were talking about uh, this event in nagpur yeah i remember till very recently mm. not even long ago till very recently in bombay on december 6th on chaitya bhumi day when the when a lot of uh, uh dalits and bahujans mm. come to dadar mm. and again the locals are not happy about mm. it and everyone from our own communities mm. like you know the privileged upper class com- upper caste communities were all talking about oh, uh, so much traffic yeah. and like you know the dalits are here and yeah. this and that and yeah. all and i remember hearing about this stuff in college mm. and i was woke for then mm. but this didn't like you know intellectually i was I could see why this is a good thing, mm-hmm. but on like brass tax real world situation, I was like, oh yeah, it's a bit of pain. Ah mm-hmm. uh, yeah, you it know? makes sense. Yeah, yeah. But and that's also like our notions of what is happening are so codified, are so reared, conditioned by what the community around us is mm-hmm. thinking, mm-hmm. and yeah. it's such an indirect process. Like it's not like they're telling us, but it's just like we infer from the way they talk about exactly, these things. exactly. Yeah. Like like for instance, a very weird sort of example was uh, that when this event happens, it's like the main complaint was, of course. the roads are blocked etc but also ki uh, dirty people hmm. you know dirty people and yeah. this dirty people thing i did not realize it had casteist connotations hmm. like hmm. earlier i thought like ha bahut zyada log aa rahe they are throwing things there making it dirty and therefore it's dirty hmm. Hmm. but the way my parents and my you know like whatever like society sort of upper caste meant it hmm. was not just the actual dirt but also the quality of the people that yeah. were coming yeah. there were like those undercurrents to it all yeah, the time yeah. and you sort of end up imbibing it in yourself yeah. until you are actually confronted by it yeah. right and for me it was a very rude awakening it mm-hmm. happened on twitter yeah. so like <laughs> like yeah, it's yeah. it's you know i i don't know i'm very lucky that that happened but we will talk about that it's well. not just that consciousness though right it's all the consciousnesses that we are being forced to confront now hmm. for instance like the patriarchy hmm. I, i mean absolutely. there are three dudes in this room and we've all benefited from it yes. even though we would yes. consider ourselves like you know f- uh, feminist leaning mm, at least right. or mm. woke or whatever mm. but we've all benefited from it absolutely and absolutely. the last two years has forced us also to confront our yeah. own ideas yeah. about what we think about a lot of things you yeah. know including this including mm. uh, including the casteism in our country right. including you know marginalization, marginalization yeah. uh, so uh, i'm just going to go into the introduction of the chapter shares do you want to start yeah let's yeah. go okay yeah Uh, this is chapter eight, confronting marginalization. In the previous chapter, we read about two different groups and their experiences of inequality and discrimination. Though powerless, such groups have fought, protested, and struggled against being excluded or dominated by others. They have attempted to overcome the situation by adopting a range of strategies in the long history. I want to. I just want to stop this here. Uh, so, uh, did you see that recent thing that happened on Twitter where? Uh, 
Jack Dorsey came and yeah. he was holding yeah. a poster that said smash, smash. Brahminical Patriarchy. Yeah. And uh, that became a whole yeah. thing. People yeah. were not happy about that. Yeah. Yeah. I just think it's just so puzzling because here you see a, a very benign attempt to actually confront marginalization yeah. and that is being confronted. Yeah. Yeah. Like the reaction to that becomes the center of the story yeah. and not the poster. Not yeah. the poster yeah. itself yeah. or what it means. What it means. Or explaining it. Yeah. Um, yeah, absolutely. And and uh, that has, I think, always been the case, right? You know, now I think we live in a time when, you know, you're talking about certain things that matter, but it will only matter if people get triggered by it. Yeah. 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 So, I mean, that is essentially it. No, and also the voices that were protesting its strongest were the perpetrators <laughs> yeah. of the Brahminical yeah, 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 yeah. Patriarchy, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Obviously, they're not going to want this to go yeah, away. Yeah. They are yeah. directly... Uh, the, the funniest was I do this uh, show called uh, Nuisance, right? Yeah. And write it and direct it as well. So... On Republic TV, they mm. were doing a debate for three days constantly, mm. where they had only called Brahmins, yeah. who were doing like bashing, like yeah, you know yeah, about yeah. Like, how could they call this Brahminical patriarchy? Yeah, and, yeah. like and it's it's kind of weird also because nobody really explained what Brahminical patriarchy actually is, mm. what it means. They just took it as like an insult, and then they were like, "Or oh, how can the Twitter CEO do this?" Mm. You know, that seems yeah. like. Is biased against our whole community. They did a is... protest yesterday. Did you see that? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was hilarious. <laughs> what was the protest? So, it was a protest against Twitter okay. for being biased, oh. which they did on Twitter. <laughs> and no, they no, were trying there was to a tell real it. world protest also. With yeah. the, they marched somewhere in Delhi. Oh, yeah, yeah. In Saket, they also yeah. marched. Like some 20 people marched and put up photos. Yeah. But the main thrust of the campaign was it has to trend on Twitter. Oh, God. Which it did. <laughs> and at number one, yeah. protest against Twitter. Wow. And then they were like, yeah. But I think that also raises the questions of like I think as w- you can say whatever you want about identity based politics but it's things like these which make us realize that it is important like you need to have the right voices talking about the right things mm-hmm. no one wants to see a Brahmin yeah. <laughs> ta- talking about this issue yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah that's absolutely it. and the f- here's where it gets even funnier okay all these people, a lot of these people who will talk about, uh, you know, there was a an internet, I mean, some, the head of a think tank mm. in Bangalore, I believe, who talked about, who said that the way the caste system will disappear is if we stop talking about oh, it. Nitin Pai. Oh, yeah. Nitin Pai. And yeah. I'm like, this is basically, and Nitin Pai or people like him, I won't, I mm. don't know him or I won't say anything about him, but people like him will understand Black Lives Matter. Yeah. Yeah. You know, they'll understand that and they'll understand that if there's a white guy talking in front of, uh, on behalf of Black Lives Matter, that there's something wrong here. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Right. They might not be able to articulate it as yeah. much, but they're like, this is wrong. Right. Or, uh, for instance, um, a, a man representing the female birth rights mm. or, you know, things like that. But here, there's this conditioning, I guess. Or, yeah institutional conditioning which just prevents you from understanding yeah. this concept and I wonder sometimes if it is if the conditioning is strong enough or you've identified yourself as a benefactor of the of the process of the system where you'll be like I must defend this yeah it's also a question of being I think you know nowadays I think it's very important to be called out mm. on your you know whatever thoughts you have whatever yeah. feelings yeah. you have and at the same time it's also become important to express these thoughts also mm. like for instance if Nitin Pai has you know said or someone else has said even I said some very wrong things on uh, social media or whatever and instantly I got called out by a bunch of people and the reaction to that in my head was that this is genuine criticism I should hear it I should change my ways and I Mm. should change the way I I should read more which which made me read Annihilation of Caste Mm. you know which made me read other uh, Dalit literature which made me watch Jai Bhim kind of kind of documentaries and uh, you know a a lot of things I actively put in effort into educating myself Mm. yeah but we live in times where this calling out process is extremely important Mm. you know because uh, Unless some women called me out about my misogynist thinking, I would not have put in that effort. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, unless I got called out for my bigotry, Mm. I would not put in that effort. But it also is a question of taking it in the right way. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So I'm not sure if that happens, that does not happen. But, you know, calling out is a thing we must do. Right. Um, And and I will actually... uh, Uh, continue with the introduction if I could just add a little bit over here I think what's very important in the last couple of years Mm. thanks to people making their voices heard or other people getting a voice because thanks to the internet and social media 
is actually identifying the ways in which the system perpetrates itself right mm. right for instance like i remember reading uh, i remember watching this video that was made by buzzfeed mm. where there was this girl who talked about casteist yeah. slurs yeah casteist slurs absolutely as being so and i remember everyday casteism yeah my remember i'm not even part of this community mm. Mm. and my grandmother you know we'd come back from playing football after uh, in the rains or whatever and she'd be like go clean yourself you look like a so and so right and she had no idea either because again she's not yeah. from the community but that word these yeah. words have become so ingrained right. in our culture that we don't even realize right. them till they're actually called out yeah. right. like i remember when i was um i used to do this auto show and i used to drive around the country test driving cars and one of the episodes that we did was about uh, in rajasthan hmm. where uh, we were driving these you know in rajasthan there are a bunch of these vintage and antique hmm. cars etc hmm. so i was driving this brand new bmw and you know, <laughs> and i realized that in a lot of homes everyone else would you know because these were these havelis yeah, and these yeah. minor royals or whatever and there'd always be a meal <laughs> and i'd always get served in ceramic uh, okay uh, high yeah. quality yeah. Yeah, yeah. uh corella or whatever while everyone was eating steel plates and cups right, right? okay and initially i thought that maybe because i was the like the guy yes. in charge or no. whatever no because even my crew my cameraman and my producer they were all asked mm-hmm. names uh they would all eat in the street and they i figured initially because again you know talking about cultural references of which i have none i figured okay maybe i am like they've given me pride of place at this table right <laughs> they were yeah. ever talking about right. it in the car yeah. and my camera was like wow you're such an idiot <laughs> <laughs> they basically no, they like oh what cast is pereira okay yeah. we just go with ceramic <laughs> oh god <laughs> true story true yeah. story yeah um it's like you know keeping separate utensils for you know maids and you know yeah here classism like, yeah. also comes in classism yeah, right? also comes in yeah absolutely because yeah. i'm obviously high class yeah, yeah. but not high caste high caste so absolutely so they will afford me the privileges of class yeah. while also <laughs> denying me <laughs> the privileges yes. of class so that's funny that's so messed up and yeah. so layered yeah. also yeah. right yeah. and and so many instances like this which we don't even notice so in this chapter we will read about some of the ways in which groups and individuals challenge existing inequalities adivasis dalits muslims women and other marginalized group argue that simply by being citizens of a democratic country they possess equal rights that must be respected many among them look up to the constitution to address these concerns in this chapter we will see why the constitution of india is something that marginalized groups invoke in the course of their struggles so you know that's the thing right you know it's a very as, as we were talking about this there are so many ways very subtly it has been ingrained casteism has been ingrained in mm. us right mm. and stress you wanted to talk about annihilation of caste right yeah, yeah. So uh before that I uh, one metaphor that I think absolutely sums up the way caste is intertwined with the countries uh, Gramsci used this uh, metaphor where he was like it's tied as if it's skin and bones yeah. right like you can't separate it you mm. can't confront it without absolutely separating it and that's mm. what Ambedkar gets at right yeah. he says that you can't have reform without absolute annihilation of the system mm-hmm. yeah and i think that's what like maybe when we think of confronting marginalization we are thinking of almost making the marginalization more polite or more acceptable mm. but i think mm. where we should be concerned with we should be thinking about how to scrap the system altogether what do you think like is it like possible to scrap the caste system altogether you know altogether? this is reminds me of a conversation i had some time ago with a very with a friend who's also very uh, educated and mostly well meaning mm. and um I was slagging I think uh, this was during Diwali and mm. I was slagging off the crackers mm. right and he's like you know I agree with you but why does it seem that you know every time that during holi everyone is like oh you guys shouldn't do this or during Diwali I think you guys shouldn't do that and I'm like give me one instance of Indian culture when I say Indian I mean like Indo-Gangetic culture mm-hmm. which does or any of the traditions that we have or any of the food that we eat or any of the things that we worship that does not have a dark past one thing tell me one thing literally one thing about our culture that we celebrate today that doesn't have a dark past mm. and he couldn't i'm sure there are mm. but he couldn't think of one right whether it was fireworks during mm. diwali whether it was holi i'm saying and not just in the caste casteism casteism bigotry patriarchy so on and so forth like holi or mm-hmm. any of these festivals have these very um we ignore them now mm. yeah you know a lot of aspects about these festivals and we only talk and i try to explain to them ki you are 83% of this country mm. obviously everything that you do is much higher magnified than what 
uh, like the Bori Muslim community mm. does, yeah. for mm. instance, who are a tiny major, mm. minority, or the Parsis, mm. or you know, the uh, Church of North India, mm. okay, or wherever, like mm. Baptists in Nagaland. Right. Like, the small, tiny communities, sure, they have their regressive uh, behaviors practices. and practices also. But then you are the overwhelming majority. Right. And when you get called out for these things, it's not calling out your... It's, it is calling out your culture because right. that is what a lot of times these things represent. Right. Right. We celebrate them now in the age of like late capitalism mm. and you know where Diwali is like you buy jewelry and drink coke. Yeah. But, <laughs> and, and hug family yeah. and like you know do all those things. But Yeah. Buy manure clothes. And, you know, yeah. Or like are. for instance Holi or whatever yeah. the festival yeah. is. But there are very dark pasts in here and we have to confront all these yeah. things. Yeah. You know like. The way I see it, it's like uh, Christmas being celebrated in Europe yep. right now, where it's just, it's a, because again, Europe has had to confront its very dark Christian past, mm, yeah. you know, mm. hundred year wars, yeah, <laughs> literally yeah. hundred year wars, wars because of Catholicism and, yeah. and Protestants and Christmas has essentially become a winter festival. Mm, yeah. Europe is overwhelmingly secular, but yeah. everyone still celebrates Christmas yeah. Yeah. while recognizing colonialism and mm. you know imperialism and mm. so on and so forth and what it represents mm. like I remember hearing this BBC show about Christmas food mm. and how each of the things that they talk about represented one aspect of colonialism right. like for instance Christmas pudding and the spice that they use in mm. it, right. or the dried fruits that they right. use in it. where right. in Europe are you going to get ah. dried raisins ah. mm. right but or cinnamon yeah. or you know wherever whatever the things that they put into these uh, puddings and yeah. so on and so forth and they confronted the fact that literally everything we do or Turkey, mm. you know, which came from North America, mm. which was also a colonial yeah. experiment in yeah. the British and failed, yeah. obviously, yeah. but still colonial. Yeah. yeah, And we don't have these conversations, yeah. right. you know, in India. Right. Like, I think, sorry, sorry, come here. Yeah, like for instance, you look at food. Yeah. Like it pisses me off that when people talk about vegetarian food, hmm. we're only talking about Brahmin food. Yes. Yeah. You know, That's actually ideas true. of Indian vegetarian food are all Brahmin. Yeah. yeah. Right. There's no other. F- I mean, I come from a South Indian, half mm. South Indian community. Mm. The Manglorians are not uh, vegetarian, mm. but they eat mm. a lot of vegetables. Right. Yeah. And no one talks about them. <laughs> <laughs> like if you think of Manglorian vegetarian food, you're thinking of that, that certain, that, that Brahmin community from that place. Yeah. Mm. And the vegetables that they eat. Yeah. Mm. You know, or the Maharashtrians, for instance. Mm. Maharashtrians eat a lot of vegetables. Yeah. 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 Even meat eating Kolhapuris eat a lot, a lot of vegetables, of vegetables yeah. but no one talks about what they're eating. <laughs> yeah. you know, it's always like amti and yeah. varan bhat and this and that. I'm like, which <laughs> horrible. <laughs> anyway, yeah. And I think uh, so. In annihilation of caste, that's something that Ambedkar talks about. He says that why we shouldn't be caught up with political reform without social reform first. Mm. Yeah. That should come first. But then I think the question that it raises is when it comes to things like Christmas, the examples that you had, if it has been enough years and if obviously now it's in a different context, even though it might have problematic origins, what do you do? Do you just like, what's, if if you could, if you had the power to change festivals, would you restart? You know, um, talking about Europe, hmm. what scares me about this kind of reform is the amount of uh, unrest and bloodshed hmm. that it takes for a society to take a hard look at itself. Right. This is these reforms happened essentially in post-war Europe, yeah. Yeah. right in the fifties and the sixties, where everyone was like, "What the fuck were we doing? Yeah. Yeah. Right? <laughs> we need to stop what yeah. we were doing and change completely." Yeah. Yeah. And that was as a as a result of like the twenty million deaths yeah. or more, thirty million deaths in Europe, you know, by Europeans upon right. up, upon themselves, right? And that's what I fear in India. You know, we are. 1.3 billion people and a comparative loss of life or unrest hmm. would be catastrophic. Yeah. yeah. You know, and that is what, because reform happens hmm. slowly. Yeah. You know, in these, now thanks to the internet, it's sped up right. considerably, but right. traditions also evolve thanks to hmm. the internet. Yeah. I mean, like shadi.com, hmm. right? Hmm. You're perpetuating something using a new medium and yeah. new technology, <laughs> right? So how are you going to, uh, how are you going to change that? Yeah. Is the question. Yeah. That you, you know, have. to answer your question, I'm just uh, taking another sort of parallel example of mm. Independence Day. Mm. Right? You know, we celebrate Independence Day. Mm. Now, Independence Day for us, you know, in 1947 
was horrifying yeah. matlab like, like the amount of people who had lost their lives in the run up yeah. to the yeah. independence yeah. etc movements that have happened jallianwala bag all all that combined mm. so when i was i was just thinking about this when my grandparents were you know young mm. they saw this hmm. yeah. they saw this they went through it they were like holy crap this mm. was bad mm. and they the way they celebrated and i'm using air quotes is by remembering those horrifying incidences and you know like mm. paying mm. tribute to it patriotic mm. they were the ones who passed on those stories to their kids who Correct. are our parents mm. right who like basically they had like first hand information about what had happened they right. would tell them stories mm. they also like got the same sort of game mm. now us our generation of people we heard it second hand hmm. we heard it through books we heard it through documentaries it was it did not have the same feel mai wahan pe tha kind hmm. of a feel right hmm. Hmm. so now our celebration is a you know of course expression of patriotism which hmm. is which is important hmm. but other than that it has become sort of a celebration in the real sense mm. where we feel happy yeah. that you know oh yes independence day it's a holiday we are going to celebrate it this is something to celebrate for us mm. and so you know the context changes right yeah. over a period of generation when you know the atrocities keep getting older and older and older and generations change mm. i think the way we celebrate days mm. also sort of changes yeah right? that's Sort of one hopes so. One hopes so. One hopes so. Uh, we have to take a break here, and after we come back, we are going to talk about uh, how the constitution protects marginalisation and how we can confront it. Cool. See you in a bit. Hello, everybody. Welcome to another awesome week on the IVM Podcast Network. If you aren't following us on social media, please make sure that you are. We are IVM Podcast on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. If you are following us on social media, I'm sure you know that it's our fourth anniversary this month. Yeah, IVM is four years old. We've done three thousand five hundred plus episodes of content, and it's been an amazing ride with a lot of fun guests, a lot of fun content, and a lot of great hosts. We'd like to thank all of our hosts because without them, we wouldn't really be doing all that much. Also, I'd mention over the last couple of weeks that we're running a service. Survey right now, a listener survey. It's on ivmpodcast.com/survey. If you have not filled that out, please do fill it up. It'll help us figure out what is working for you, what's not working, and we'll give us some information that we can use to get some advertising on the show. On the scene in the unseen, Amit Verma is joined by author Shrinath Raghavan. They discuss the recent tensions between India and Pakistan, its historical context, and what the future may hold. We're launching a new show called States of Anarchy about global affairs, hosted by foreign policy enthusiast Hamsini Hariran. On how to citizen, we move on to Chapter Eight: Confronting Marginalization. Meghna Dhar Shreyas are. Joined by creative director Joel Pereira, who draws from his professional and personal experiences to discuss the topic. On advertising is dead, Varun talks to executive editor of Rolling Stone, Nirmika Singh, about new age journalism, what it takes to be a music journalist in India, the rise of Indian hip hop, and a lot more. Also, check out last week's episode with Gaurav Kapoor, founder of Oak Tree Sports and former VJ, who talks about his journey to becoming a sports presenter and what's missing in our sports content. On Golgappa, Tripathi is in conversation with musician Karan Chitra Deshmukh. He talks about how he got into playing instruments and gives a glimpse of his talent on the show. On Geek Fruit, Tejas and Jishnu talk about their favorite classic TV shows and give their opinions on which can be potentially revived. Also, check out last week's bulletin where they talk about IVM's fourth anniversary and their favorite shows on our network. And with that, let's continue with your show. Welcome back. Uh, we are here with Joel, and uh, all of us are here trying to confront marginalization. Yes. So b- before we move on, I wanna just uh, quote uh, Annihilation of Cars. This one quote that really has uh, stuck with me. This is what Ambedkar says: "There is no doubt in my opinion that unless you change your social order, you can achieve little by way of progress. You cannot mobilize the community either for defense or for offense. You cannot build anything on the foundations of caste. You cannot build up a nation. You cannot build a morality." Anything that you will build will be built on the foundations of caste, which will crack and will never be a whole. Very interesting. Yeah. Uh, so you know, uh, th- there is a question of uh, social justice that mm. comes. The whole point of uh, confronting marginalization and laws that have been made, sort of, to uh, confront marginalization. So under our constitution, you know, th- th- we have a right to not be discriminated against. Yeah, Article which, 15. Uh, yeah. Yes, and we. Uh, it's it's a part of social justice right mm. so uh, what do you think uh, joel like you know what does social justice exactly mean exactly i think what it says in article 15 yeah that every human being has the right to be to live his life mm. irrespective of his caste creed community mm-hmm. gender etc mm-hmm. etc i think what article 15 missed and what uh, was rectified in mm. 1989 with the scheduled caste scheduled mm. tribe atrocities, atrocities. act was the word dignity yeah you know it's like uh, 
you know you read the american constitution hmm. thomas jefferson wrote about the pursuit of happiness yeah yeah which was an unheard of concept right. at that time yeah. and still now we 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 struggle to understand and i say this because the Ameri- the, the american constitution heavily influenced the mm. uh, yeah, yeah. the indian constitution as did a lot of other mm, countries right. but that phrase right the pursuit of justice and the word dignity mm. in the scst act atrocities act in 1989 that i think provided greater context right. to everything mm. right because what is non discrimination without dignity right right and i think that is what social justice means mm-hmm. it could be um, everything from economic prosperity mm. to social integration to whatever every aspect of the human life yeah. right whether it's your relationships whether it's you know your the way you live the way you work the way you eat and the ability to do that with dignity yeah and i think that is what social justice means mm. to me mm. it's a very abstract idea mm. right because how do you uh, how do you evaluate dignity mm-hmm. right but yes not being paraded in the street or burned alive is dignity, dignity. not being forced to uh, do uh, manual scavenging or work only in the sewage department right. that's dignity that's dignity right and it's very interesting you mentioned this because in even in the chapter right mm. when, when uh, in the Uh, the part about promoting social justice they immediately go on to talk about the SCST atrocities act yeah. right of uh, 1989 Correct. it's it's a very interesting um you know sort of act that exists which not a lot of people know about mm. because as you said how do you define dignity mm. right and to define dignity what they have done in this act is nothing short of you know miraculous yeah. is um so i'm i have the act in front of me mm. right now mm. where in chapter 2 offenses of the atrocities they have described these offenses in extremely graphic ways yes. right for instance they have said that whoever puts any inedible or obnoxious substance into the mouth of a member of a scheduled caste or scheduled tribe or forces of such a member to drink or eat such inedible or obnoxious substance should be punished mm. whoever garlands with footwear or parades naked or semi naked a member of the scheduled caste or a scheduled tribe should be punished and whoever dumps excreta sewage carcasses or any other obnoxious substances in the premises or the entrance of the premises of mm. an scst person should be punished so the fact that and the civics book mentions this right yes. you know mm. that it has been described in such graphic details yeah. the existence of this law itself is like a sign that we are not yeah. uh, in equal society yeah. there is yeah. some shit going on around yeah. us yeah. which we have to address yeah. and it's like you know it's very funny because even in the first chapter when we had rohan he we were talking about whether the constitution and the laws are a reflection of society or is is it a is it something that we are aspiring, aspiring to, to be yeah. right so what do you think like what what do you think it is um i think our parliament is a reflection yeah. of our society right. i think our legislature is a reflection of our society yeah. and our uh, judicial system which is the constitution which mm. the courts uh, are uh, empowered to uphold the constitution i think that's our greatest aspiration mm. Mm. because i think that's where the imbalance lies mm. right the, the legislature is a re- is an actual reflection yeah. like in 2014 when uh, you know the the bjp sweep i was not surprised mm. Mm. you know when all like for instance even now when people say all these bigoted things on the internet and it doesn't surprise me mm. because i'm like you've said these things yeah. all these years mm. and now finally you're just saying it out in public right whereas when our courts do progressive things i am honestly a little surprised then <laughs> because our court system is also coming out of the same Crop. greater crop right. yeah, yeah you know yeah. <laughs> but the fact that it aspires to being progressive and take dragging the country forward yeah. from time to time yeah. i feel is nothing short of miraculous miraculous yeah, yeah. absolutely but because i asked this question because stress you remember that conversation we had with rohan yeah. where you know we sort of decided it's both but here in this case of the scst atrocities act right it mm. is clearly a reflection yeah right yeah. which is basically they are defining what shit goes down yeah. 
like regardless of whether you yeah. know it or not yeah. and these should be punished yeah. right like for instance like as 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 you said dignity to define dignity they felt it was important to graphically detail what is violation of dignity mm-hmm. yeah so what do you think now like is it a reflection or is it what we have to be it is a reflection and i think the fact that we are thinking of it in terms of oh whether it's a reflection or whether we aspire to be that just mm-hmm. points to how ignorant we are like right. that's what we are getting from the law that we didn't know this happened we didn't know this that existed till we saw that oh don't do this very <laughs> specific cruel, cruel thing. thing yeah that that's actually a very good point like you know after you read this it's a bit jarring yeah. right because i mean you've seen it in movies you've yeah. seen you've heard about it but these things still happen yeah no and here's the thing right they happen in front of us all the time hmm. and which is coming back to my earlier point about how this behavior is being called out now yeah. like i in 2014 i believe i was in uh, haridwar hmm. okay we were driving through uttarakhand and we were stopping by at haridwar because i had never seen the city so i was there for about 2 days and a friend of mine was a research scholar there hmm. so we met up with her and she was taking us around and we were in the market at uh, eating something in the uh, during lunch time and there were this small procession of people who were wearing uh, you know those bells around your ankles mm. those what dancers wear mm-hmm. etc and they had those bells on and so they were jingling and man haridwar is full of freaks mm. so <laughs> i'm like everything goes seems to be going in this place mm-hmm. so i'm like i didn't even mention it and then later on um, i was like who were those people i thought they were maybe a troupe of performers mm-hmm. or something like that and then she told me that those are the uh, people from the i believe it's the dong community mm. who are uh, who handle corpses oh okay okay and this is in 2014 right in yeah, haridwar right. which place where it's very aspirational for a lot of people in right. this country to go to and she's like i was like oh, why were they wearing the bells then mm. she's like guess okay then i figured but there's more okay okay i was like oh because they are from that community and she's like yeah so that people move away uh-huh. but there's more to it This community evidently is only allowed to use the market between eleven and one eleven p m to one p m. Guess why? Why? That's lunch. Guess no. Oh, as think as bizarrely as you can. Uh, This is like one of those uh, I S trick questions, <laughs> <laughs> M cat trick questions. Uh, from eleven p m. Eleven a m to one p m. One p m. Um, afternoon time because nobody goes to the market much. No. Okay, I'll tell you. Shortest shadows. What? Yeah. Wait, what? Yeah. Wait, how does that? Holy shit! Oh, so the their shadows highest... do not fall on someone else. Is yes. that the reason? Yes. Wow. Holy crap! The sun is highest at noon, so yeah. your shadows are the shortest. Longest at twilight and and uh, dawn and dusk. So between eleven a.m. and one p.m., your shadows are the shortest. Holy crap! So they're only allowed, and this was twenty fourteen. Wow. Okay. Oh my goodness. And. In Haridwar, it's not yeah. even like some yeah, yeah, yeah. mofusil gao yeah, somewhere yeah, yeah. or something. This is happening here. I mean, talking about Nagpur, yeah. I was once driving to Nagpur, and we didn't reach there that night. Hmm. Okay, and we were going to stay uh, at this BDS with this hmm. BDS, uh, this block development officer, a BDO, sorry, hmm. somewhere before Nagpur for hmm. the night in a government circuit house. So we got off the highway and driving through this dirt road. and we see these guys mm. and they have uh, these you know those long handled brooms mm. with the yeah. with the ha- with the long handled brooms mm-hmm. that you see municipal workers mm-hmm. using in streets mm. and they had those and they tied this rope around the handle okay and they tied the handle around their heads and i thought okay i'm like this this is native ingenuity basically now they're hands free mm. <laughs> and the guy who was with us in the car told us no they're they're from so and so community and they're cleaning up after them while walking so they walk and the broom trails them uh, to clean up after them and this must have been like 2012 or 2013 yeah. not not like yeah. very long ago and in vidarbh somewhere in vidarbh but I that's you know i think that's so interesting that your first reaction to that was thinking that oh this was some sort of hands free yeah. but do you think that happens that we make every effort like our subconscious make every effort to repress these things to not learn about these things yes yeah oh completely you know this uh, the famous brahmin hobby of uh, putting science to stupid things mm. <laughs> like you know you'll have tamil brahmins talking about how like eating curd and rice is like it releases some yeah, weird yeah, hormone yeah. and this and that <laughs> or like uh, people justifying i remember recently when that uh, menstrual thing was happening uh, this conversation on menstruation 
and how some people were talking about yeah women don't go in the kitchen because they emit this sort of bacteria yeah, yeah. and that's become my my new thing now. Yeah. i keep <laughs> i keep identifying these these and it's it's limit it's not necessarily limited to the brahmin community yeah. but it's definitely most perpetuated, perpetuated there. Yeah. there to justify all these things which yeah. which you know in the modern society sort of considered as considers as not social justice basically yeah. it's and they, also they, and iske also iske piche to science hai kya problem hai tumko iska internet so yeah like we've knew we know this for a long time yeah. and uh, this is why this is yeah. why. like haath se kyu khate ho to apparently if your fingers touch your tongue it secretes more saliva and helps you digest the food <laughs> someone told me this and i was like maybe i i don't know why but for years i've been told this yeah. i guess. I've, i've also heard this that you need to touch uh, elders feet because uh, when you bend down blood circulation it goes to your head so you become smarter nice oh amazing Super. Uh, but also let me just make a call like uh, to all our listeners uh, with the Hashtag uh, Brahminical Science. Just uh, if there are any yeah, other, I would love to follow that. <laughs> if, yeah. Brahminical the, Science. Oh, if I there are any other explanations that we have heard, any uh, to justify things that we do in everyday life, please uh, tweet, uh, Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, yeah, everything. yeah, and please comment. Uh, it's it's interesting. Hashtag Because, Brahminical you know, Science. Uh, to bring this question, the civics book has given a very interesting example, right? Mm. I'll just quickly read yeah, that yeah. story out. The villagers of Jakmalgur are geared gearing up for a big festival. Once in five. years the local deity is honored and priests from 20 neighboring villages come for this 5 day event the ceremony begins with a member of the dalit community washing the feet of all the priests and then bathing in the water used for this and this happens a lot i i know this yeah, yeah, in jakmalgur the person who performed this task belonged to ratnam's family Ratnam is a person they just introduced. His father and grandfather had both performed the same task before him. Though they were never allowed to enter the temple, this ritual was viewed as a great honor bestowed on them on this special occasion. Now it was Ratnam's turn. Ratnam was all of 20 years studying engineering in a nearby college. He refused to perform the ritual. He said He had no faith in this practice, and his mem- family members were forced to perform this ritual because they were Dalits. So basically, and then it goes on to tell you how he angered the upper castes of the village, how he was ostracized, and how basically he continued to protest against this. And you know, it led to like some reform, and the ritual was finally abolished. Mm. But his family still remained ostracized. Mm. You know, and and his house was burned down, and yeah. it's very gruesome. Basically, the whole details are very bad. you know that's the thing right you know when when um say for instance when your people parents justify things using traditions or mm. you know now science you know whatever it is to convince the newer generation who is sort of kindly and well pointing out to the authority figures mm. that listen you know this just seems wrong to me this yeah. is not what i have been taught yeah but for, to come to that stage also someone has to call you out yeah So um I just wanted to ask a very broad question to both of you. Mm-hmm. In your own personal ways, mm-hmm. how are you confronting marginalization? Or are you trying to or are you educating people or how are you doing it? Is there a element of that in your life? Um there's a element of yeah, quite a yeah. big <laughs> element of that in my life <laughs> because I have been referred to as like you know cranky or yeah. you know you don't need to or because I Initially, I would not say anything, mm. and then I've come to a point where I like I don't care anymore. Mm. My friends tend not to be like that mm. in the sense they all we all have evolved simultaneously. Mm. So I don't have any more close friends who would say something horrible or who mm. would do something horrible. Mm. But I am constantly confronted by um, examples of uh, casteism, etc. Mm. You know, especially in my own family, not so much because again, we are not uh, from within this the caste uh, system, though it exists in in among the Christians. But we don't have that in our family. Mm. My family, thank my father, my grandfather was a Nehruvian socialist, mm-hmm. so uh, he had. But still, enough of a Catholic to have nine children. <laughs> 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 But out of the nine children that he had, um, I think seven of them married non-Christians. Oh, okay. yeah. Mm. So we've had that in our. But uh, so not as much in our in my own home. But a lot of it, you know, with among friends, mm-hmm. among semi acquaintances. And the mm. funny thing about being Catholic in Bombay. is that we are obviously privileged and upper class right, right? because we have we speak english mm. and we have often uh, premier educations right. because we all went to zaviers and mm-hmm. i did wilson college mm. and so on and so forth so 
we a lot of times uh, upper caste people forget who they're with hmm. with us you know and they say horrible things and be like yeah. you guys you realize i'm a minority right yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you realize this right i'm like it's happened to me so many times right. where people will say horrible things about like you know or oh, those people or, yeah. you know um yeah yeah it's like i don't let my maid use the washroom and th- things like that from people who you think are your friends and with similar socio economic backgrounds as you do and then i confront it hmm. a lot of times a lot of times it's 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 uh, taken positively hmm. because like you said if you don't know how will you ever know yeah <laughs> exactly. that's that circle yeah right till it's called out yeah. you just won't, won't know, know because know. you're surrounded by people who have the same opinion as you do hmm. yeah. till someone comes along and says hey no you know things are not that way anymore hmm. Yeah, so that's my little way of doing it. I confront actually tend to confront a lot more uh, misogyny mm. more than yeah. like you know at least in the circles that I roam. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I try to try as to. much as I can. Shreyas, yeah. um, so my roommate calls me the thought police mm. <laughs> because he's just like, can you stop trying to find things that are wrong with everything I say? Mm. But I feel that's the that's the only way to go, and you might come off as. more confrontational always trying to fight pick fights but i think personally in my capacity as a friend as a son as a nephew whatever i think just talking to people around me trying to get into the like not taking the easy way out not mm. being like oh we don't need this argument mm. we'll just like watch this show over it happens it's ha- and you know so personally you can sort of have these conversations sometimes and i've had many conversations like confronting it because i think confronting marginalization has to start with your family first yeah. you know like and yeah. and i think you know friends fir bhi theek hai but your family, family. has some very deep rooted problematic oh, yeah. thoughts Horrible. especially if you come from a very upper caste hindu brahmin sort of family mm. right yeah. and you know confronting that is i think in my head mm. more important mm. than anything else yeah. right now for me yeah. because you know what i think is that that conversation which earlier used to be sort of repressed and there were undercurrents is now coming to the fore Correct. Yeah. and that is on whatsapp yeah. <laughs> like you know yeah. and like all these family groups mm. are rife with caste shit oh god know, like, yeah oh my god like yeah. horrifying stuff about you know how you know brahmins are superior or how mm. you know the random forwards about how you know this is the superior race or whatever like it's very problematic mm. but the thing is when you call them out on their face they will have a conversation but when you call them out on whatsapp though now then shit gets real you are removed from the group no you're not like but people will pounce on you yeah. people will be like why are you such a spoil sport yeah. why can't you talk about anything else i have else? a friend of mine who does the same thing and she tells me then suddenly if she says something on the group then suddenly she'll get five side messages <laughs> yeah. from like her mom <laughs> or like hey why are you doing this yeah. she's old <laughs> same same thing happens like five relatives will message me saying why are you getting into this these are old people yeah you yeah, these are your elders yeah. and they only think like this for years only yeah. so why are you even trying they will not change their thoughts but my point is why not yeah. i have to confront the shit you know yeah. like this is wrong what you're saying is wrong yeah. and if i have to be that unpopular asshole on that group i will be that unpopular asshole on that group right and while also completely recognizing the fact that we can say these things yeah absolutely you know because i can i know so many like when i was in college and stuff and you know these uh, right charged pop uh, conversation back then re- like reservation for mm-hmm. instance mm-hmm. the consensus was that it was a bad thing ah. but also because everyone who was talking about it were the uh, were us mm. basically upper caste upper class yeah. like i know communists from college who were anti reservation wait that doesn't make any doesn't sense doesn't make sense but it is what it is like hard left mm. kids yeah right talking about going being like oh you know this is equality is important mm. and this and it makes a lot of sense mm. because communism you have to think economically right mm-hmm. communism may there's no of religion course. or whatever of course so yeah um but, but i'm i'm glad we have come to reservations because we yeah. have to talk about that yeah uh, shreyas uh, we have heard this a bunch of times we about we have this a bunch of times yeah. uh everyone in nagpur man whenever whenever reservation comes up yeah. you hear the same same spiel you haven't been denied a seat mm. you don't know mm. and just the fact that these are the two things that are being compared years and years of historic oppression mm. just being stripped of your identity mm. dignity and 
मेरे बेटे को मेडिकल कॉलेज में सीट नहीं मिली सीट नहीं मिली दीज आर दू थिंग्स बींग कम्पेयर विच इज आई थिंक जस्ट अ फॉल्स इक वैलेंस एंड यूजली लाइक आई एम लुकिंग फॉर सजेशन हाउ डू यू हैव दैट कन्वर्जेशन इट आई कॉन्ट कम टू अटिंग कॉलेज बड़ी we met like after 5 or 6 years mm. not maybe 10 years since we last met we decided to get a drink and he is a um a creative director at an agency mm. okay so doing well for mm. himself and like you know whatever and we were talking I and mean, we were having a drink somewhere and at a very exp- at a decently priced bar mm. and he was like you know i uh, you know i'm like how did you get into advertising hmm. right he's like yaar i wanted to do engineering hmm. but they answer these fucking reservations i didn't get a seat right. and i'm like immediately my response was like you seem to be okay now yeah. <laughs> you know it didn't like you for you not getting that engineering seat didn't mean mean yeah. a life of life penury of, yeah. compared to like you seem to be fine yeah. you because he was at me in college yeah. so he did arts and yeah. then he got into the creative space yeah. and now is an is a creative director at an agency so yeah. obviously he's making yeah. a good amount of money yeah. and he seems to be doing well for himself the fact that he didn't yeah. get that engineering so- uh, spot yeah. didn't matter it didn't matter right. yeah. and i have used this a lot of times mm. with a lot of people i mean like you seem to be okay now yeah, right. yeah. you know like you're doing you're, you're doing, doing fine right. yeah yeah it's not like you know you you missed out on some great dream or something or yeah. you've you're a class 4 worker in the government because you missed that spot mm. yeah mm. you know compared to a guy mm. who if he did miss that spot that's it yeah. his tunnel is shut yeah. there's no light at the end of it right so i, I think i find that very successful right. and it's it's very weird that you both of you have this example as well because i i do too i mean mm. i for years i have been sort of told that you know reservations are bad like everywhere everywhere you go like seat nahi mila ya fir ye cousin ko seat nahi mila wo you know relative ko seat nahi mila so mm. therefore mm. their lives are shit mm. nobody's lives are shit actually yeah, yeah of course yeah. absolutely but um, the the whole point was that you know um, weirdly enough so i i did the i don't know mistake i don't call it a mistake i actually expressed it on twitter right that reservations are bad like in mm. a conversation random conversation mm. i was having and the amount of outrage that happened after that was crazy because mm. at that point i realized that my opinion actually matters mm. said <laughs> that you know if i say wrong things i will be called out for it because yeah. until that point it was all hunky dory you know constitution clear baat karta hai etc but when i said this mm. it is problematic yeah. right that is which has forced me to sort of educate myself which is mm. i think a good thing so i wouldn't yeah. call it a mistake yeah. i just feel that it had to be out there in the world for me to be corrected mm. so you know that is when i understood what social justice really means mm-hmm. right as you said when people have been oppressed for years and years and years and generations by your sort of you know lot Generations, of people yeah. and your lot of people still doesn't realize it but you at least you can be the one of those people who does realize it here is where guilt comes in mm. you know where you know that there is this refrain ki maine to kuch nahi kiya to mere ko kyun karna pad raha hai mere ko to kyun matlab maine to kisi ko you know humiliate nahi kiya hai maine personally kisi ko you know casteist you know nothing i i share i give i you let my maid use my bathroom so i am clearly you know not that person yeah but i think what people don't realize is the generations of oppression mm. i think it's a very difficult for you know, to to sort it's of to comprehend. It's, it's difficult to comprehend yeah. it, it, it's just irrational like how do you think of that if that hasn't happened to you and i think like again coming back to annihilation of caste that's something that ambedkar talks about mm. he says that when it comes to these things you can't appeal to a brahman's reasoning yeah that you is know, not an option i have again a middle ground over mm. here thanks to all these conversations that i have with people reservations i think uh, people don't see national policy as abstracts right because it affects them personally right. like you said mm. this friend my friend was better because he didn't get a seat hmm. right so he might even support reservations as an idea hmm. but when it affects you personally or your brother or your cousin yeah. and i'm not denying that yeah. a lot of people do might not get seats right right and it's very easy for us to sit and say ki yeah but you're fine now and yeah. so that but mm-hmm. at that time it's 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 traumatic it's traumatic yeah yeah but what i you know when these merit conversations come hmm. up i reverse it and make it as personal hmm. i'm like when you were in 10th standard your folks bought you navneet ka 21 sets right mm. 
you went for coaching classes right hmm. you went you had a mother or someone who would wake up at 5 am and make chai or hmm. milk and horlicks for you absolutely. in the morning hmm. absolutely when you studied hmm. yeah. you had your older brother or your uncle dropping you to the exam hmm. center absolutely. all these small things hmm. that you don't realize are what and then when you see some kid from some slum in an urban area some slum or some village somewhere hmm. who's doing the same exam as you hmm. don't talk to me about merit Absolutely. There's no merit then, right? Absolutely. Because you can't say like, is the exam all of it? Yeah. Right. And a lot, and people understand that mm-hmm. again because it's never been actually explained to them mm-hmm. in this right. way that mm-hmm. this boy or this girl who's 15 or 16 or 17 is doing this exam. She's trying her hardest. Mm-hmm. Okay. She has no support. She mm-hmm. has no coaching classes. Mm-hmm. Her parents may or may not even be aware of what mm-hmm. she's doing mm-hmm. because they are probably illiterate or uneducated or working too hard. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. For her. to to actually to provide that school, yeah. that hot horlicks or like you know here eat this ghee peda because it's absolutely. good for your brain or yeah. whatever absolutely then is that merit is yeah. that equal yeah and a, a lot of them would would say no yeah you know and that is a way of confronting these things Marginal. by making yeah absolutely. marginalization i think by making it very personal yeah yeah Look I, at I your really, I really I really like this because uh, we were just talking about you know how in the west right now there's this whole black life life is matter thing mm. and how white guilt mm. is such a thing which mm-hmm. people are talking about so upper caste guilt and white guilt yeah. can, can that be compared I think they definitely can be compared and one similar thing that I've uh, noticed in the US and here is this guilt that comes that has seeped into people people use that to center themselves in the narrative yeah <laughs> like then it yeah. then it just becomes about an upper caste person's guilt and yeah. not about why that guilt is for it's right. about yeah i'm wallowing in my guilt uh, my pe- yeah do something about it have conversations with people or yeah but i mean it's such a thing though yeah yeah you know you have to realize that you know the privilege you have like you know this whole horlicks example is so accurate right yeah, now yeah. that you know the fact that you got horlicks in the morning and you went to school and puked it out maybe because <laughs> that was whatever, intolerant yeah. whatever but uh, you know just the fact that you had that because i remember this and i remember this very very clearly that i had uh, i had a friend who was not from like the privileged background that i was from mm. and I went to his house and uh, it was a smallish house with with like very basic amenities etc and when i came back i remember talking to my parents about like describing because they asked you know how is your friend where does he live etc mm. so i was like okay and i ex- explained you know the house or whatever etc uh, my mom basically was like ha huh, you know that makes sense you know the kind of family he belongs to you know that that is what is mm. expected. Mm. I didn't realize it back then that you know the kind of privilege I have versus him. Yeah. And he was also doing better in exams and you know mm. whatever than me. Mm. So I was like, you know, you know yahan pe merit ka kya hota hai? Mm. Is situation mein like clearly I have all the privilege but yeah. I have been wasting it away and just like not studying and just taking it for granted mm. whereas he who is from a non privileged background is also studying harder than me mm-hmm. and trying to get somewhere so i think you know one way to confront marginalization is also to have conversations with as diverse of a set of people yeah. as you have not yeah. to remain ingrained mm. in your community and mm. you know just keep forwarding whatsapps to just the same community yeah. and perpetuating that mm. sort of hatred yeah. and when guilt comes in privilege hmm. guilt comes in mm-hmm. i don't think it's right to say wallow in it yeah. but actually go out and do something about it right so what what do you think you know i've uh, i was raised a uh, catholic hmm. but i've been an atheist from the time i was 14 hmm. but if there's one thing that i remember like you know a lot of people you know this this uh, the confessional mm. a lot of uh, yeah. in pop culture it's this dark room yeah. when you go there and you <laughs> kneel and then this priest yeah. is there to scream that doesn't happen mostly anymore mm. okay oh okay yeah, yeah. a lot of uh, especially the jesuit the more progressive mm. uh, wings of the catholic mm-hmm. church don't do that anymore mm. and i remember this priest telling me once why and he said that guilt is useless Yeah. Mm. Okay. What is important? So now, if you have something, you'll talk to a priest, but you'll probably be sitting across the table or in his quarters or in church or something, and it's a sacrament, mm. right? It's something that Catholics do are supposed to do, but it doesn't happen in those environs anymore. Mm. It's because they realize that remorse and redemption are far more important than guilt. Yeah. Right? Guilt is useless. Guilt. What will you do with guilt? Right. Right. Remorse. 
for your sins mm. in this case mm. and redemption as in you make it right or right. you make it better mm. right that is more important mm. and that even though it was from a belief system that i have like quite a lot of now uh, indifference to mm-hmm. but back then abhorrence for mm. that was a lesson learned but basic ideas is what you're saying yeah. makes sense that was that a lesson learned right yeah. that guilt is useless yeah. what do you need to do like you know you can wallow in your guilt and then overcompensate which yeah. is what a lot of us yeah. do yeah. <laughs> right yeah. where we were like we'd be extra I've been brought white people do around black yeah, people yeah. Mm-hmm. what like you know woke yeah. uh, upper caste people do around lower caste people which they don't want mm-hmm. right you be remorseful for your ideas or whatever mm. and then redeem yourself mm. in some way that mm. you can i think that is the most effective yeah. thing that can be done that outside of absolute revolution right yeah. right i think that's a very reasonable sort of uh, way to also end this mm. but before we end this uh, can we just briefly and quickly mm. talk about the new reservation policy the 10% upper caste reservation right yeah. um, joel what do you think about it <laughs> is it okay so because we have been talking talking all this while about social justice right you know merit social justice we we had that conversation mm. because the way this sort of reservation 10% reservation is being positioned is it's for the general category mm. i find it hilarious in this government right. from this government that a whatsapp forward from 5 years ago or 4 months ago or 6 <laughs> years ago or whatever suddenly then becomes policy policy <laughs> right because upper caste have been saying this for decades yeah, i know yeah right that oh everyone is poor yeah. Yeah. right they do, again either they are ignorant or refuse to understand that social justice is not the same as same a as, jobs yeah. policy yeah. yeah it's not the same but uh, yeah i mean that's the only thing i can say about it that's it's just cementing that belief right yeah right that economic like dignity is equal to economic betterment correct mm. because not the way you're treated in society no, because, because that, if you have money you will be treated well that which is, is which if you are a uc i mean a, a lower caste person or a, from the dalit or bajan communities doesn't necessarily true yeah. Yeah. yeah like that case man in kanpur i think kanpur rural where the guy wanted to get married mm. and was not allowed to take his bara through the village Yeah. till he got yeah. the actual the the went to court and i think got a very high level mm-hmm. of judiciary got involved and yeah. said no damn it uh-huh. police and this and that to take his bara through that village mm-hmm. because the thakurs in that village were like you know protesting mm-hmm. his existence mm-hmm. wow or the number of videos you see online of yeah. like you know grooms wearing motorcycle helmets yes. and riding on horses is hilarious yeah. but at the same time it's deeply Deep sad sad yeah, yeah deeply sad absolutely so chris what do you think about the policy uh, i think that policy is First, when I saw the policy, I was like, "This is dumb." <laughs> But then, the more I thought about it, I think it's insidious yeah. because what it's trying to do is by giving reservation to the general category. Also, it's basically trying to efface history, right? It's, uh, what do you mean? Because, like, the, the reservation was in response to all the differences mm-hmm. that uh, a powerful group of people have created mm-hmm. in the society, mm-hmm. and by having those reservations be there for general people as mm-hmm. well. You are just undoing that completely. That makes sense. So all the all the question of social justice, which this chapter talks about so much, hmm. just thrown out of the window. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. No, and you know the interesting thing about this policy, and which people don't realize, you know, when 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 as you said, it is a WhatsApp forward that got converted yeah. into policy because yeah. WhatsApp forward have no sense behind. No, it. nobody will think of implementation then. This policy. is not only problematic on a very fundamental level because of the points we talk about but because of implementation mm. a it was a constitutional amendment which got done in 48 hours yeah. right which was horrifying to watch yeah, like yeah. announcement ho gaya 48 hours baad constitution change, change ho gaya, ho gaya yeah. and it's like uh, tumne iske bare mein baat bhi nahi kiya kisi se how much time does it take usually for like a so it takes like years gst took 8 years to pass yeah, yeah it wow. was the like constant conversations yeah. when you are amending the constitution it It has to be well thought out. Yeah. It has to go to committees. It has to go because next time you want to amend it, hmm. you'll need two thirds majority again. But here's the thing, right? There was no need for that because this is what people have been thinking for years yeah. now. Yeah. There was no need for that conversation anymore yeah. because everyone was like, "Yeah, we are. This is true." No, but that's the thing. And so, with implementation, for instance, mm. I will just give you one small example. It says that there is a eight lakh above, you know, the eight lakh ke below, jo bhi aata hai, they will get EWS mm. reservation, right? Mm. Economically weaker sections. Now, suppose you are your family income is below eight lakh, and you are like this honest person who gives and says, "Ki mera eight lakh se kam hai family ka income." So, like government is like, "Ha, certificate le lo." 
you can use this so you mm. use it mm. your job basically you get a job mm. you actually go above 8 lakh then your family income goes about 8 lakh and you are that honest person who goes and returns that certificate yeah sure in what universe does that happen yeah. like and also how will the government track mm. what is your family income yeah if his wife and him get divorced he is above 8 lakh his wife suddenly becomes below 8 lakh to fir wo certificate ka kya hoga hmm. how will she get it to yeah. so nobody thought through the implementation at all yeah. zero people and i think that is the problem we have with reservation policy right now is because it has become such an emotive thing that we have forgotten it was all about social justice you can always tell when people are pro res pro anti reservation that it is casteist because you have these impassioned conversations about merit and you mm. know the fact that yeah, i know poor brahmins and this mm. and that but no one actually talks about why don't we demand that the government just make more colleges yeah you absolutely know? that's a more a more realistic demand right, right right if if you're coming in a country and there's this huge inflow of of people who want to do say engineering right to demand the government create 100 more engineering colleges far easier for them yeah. than to create reservations right, or whatever yeah, i mean right. but no one ever brings that up absolutely no one ever brings absolutely. that up absolutely and i think that is a great way to end the podcast thank you yeah, yeah. yeah that was a great way to end the podcast right and uh, this time we didn't do the recreation of basically the place where a person uh, you know is is like you know hanging out with friends etc <laughs> because he was not in the country <laughs> so the <laughs> listeners would relate guys so if you are wondering are wo recreation kaha gaya so that's the reason why we didn't do it that's true but uh, i remember you know, coming back to india and being appalled that there are no conflicts here <laughs> <laughs> so we sort of did a recreation of his childhood of you know what it was because it was very fascinating to see someone who has not had this book also i i must th- i must um, give a shout out to your parents for being excellent parents yeah. i guess yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. I, that's that's a very good thing um so Shri- Yes, any uh, end remarks? Any closing remarks? Yeah, before closing, I just wanna again, I, I just can't get over Ambed Karai. Just love his <laughs> writing so much. So, one thing he talks about is uh, Swaraj, right. and during this time, people were fighting for Swaraj, and he says that in the fight for Swaraj, you fight with the whole nation on your side, but in this, in the battle against caste, you have to fight against the whole nation, mm. and that to your own, and that is more important than Swaraj. That's very interesting. Yeah. That's very nice. Um, so thank you so much, uh, you. Joel, thank for, for having, uh, yeah. having coming here. Where should people contact you slash follow you? Or do you want to give a shout out? Oh, I, am, <laughs> I am a social media red flag. Like right. I said, I'm a black hole. As far as I am on Twitter. I'm at Pereira Joel at right. Pereira Joel. Right. But expect no response. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I like guests who don't have social media presence. Yeah, it's nice. So that's Shreyas, it. is that the Shreyas, episode? Yeah, Shreyas. Oh, to follow yeah, me, yeah. Uh, to follow me uh, on Instagram, I'm uh, at Shreyas underscore Manohar. On Twitter, I'm at Very Shreyas. And uh, please, before we end, uh, remember the hashtag Brahminical Science. Uh, If you have any more explanations of crazy things that happen and ex- explanations that justify it, please uh, tweet it out, Instagram it, everything. Uh, yes, please do that. You can follow me at me Meghnad on Twitter, and you can follow me on Instagram at Meghnad S. Uh, also, please uh, visit the website ivmpodcast dot com slash how dash to dash citizen, where you will find a drive link with the chapter here. We were talking about chapter eight, confronting marginalization. So, if you want to give this episode another listen with the chapter in front of you, yeah. I am sure you will. have a better experience a better immersive experience of this podcast please follow ivm podcast everywhere which is at ivm podcast on twitter and instagram and on facebook so please follow them and they have some great shows lined up for you and this is it for this episode of how to citizen we will see you next time goodbye thanks bye thanks bye In the penultimate episode of How to Citizen, we have comedian Ashish Shakya with us. Please tune in next Tuesday to have fun with him while we discuss some public facilities. Hi listeners, we at Aditya Birla Sun Life Mutual Fund have come up with a special podcast series called MF 101 in collaboration with Bloomberg Quint. MF 101 is an informative series that will help you understand the recipe behind mutual fund investments and what's more it's coming from the chefs of the mutual fund buffet table 
from the very own fund managers and analysts who are the manufacturers of the funds that help you realize your investment goals. New episodes out every Monday. You can listen to the show on the IBM Podcast app or wherever you get your podcasts. Sachin Tendulkar, Virat Kohli, Don Bradman, and now Cyrus Brocha. Okay, probably not in the right company. I mean, Don Bradman is Australian, but it's called Cyrus Says. A wonderful show about everything. Find the show on the IVM Podcast app, ivmpodcast.com, or wherever you listen to podcasts.